Before the Roman city of Herculaneum became famous as the frozen in time brother of nearby Pompeii, it was a getaway town for the highest of Roman society. Over its history, control of the city traded hands from the Etruscans to the Greeks to the Samnites and finally to the Romans in 89 BC. Its location on the modern Bay of Naples in southern Italy made it a perfect place for wealthy Romans to travel on holiday. It's estimated that 4,000 people might have lived in the city at its peak. However, the heyday of Herculaneum lasted less than a decade before tragedy struck. On an autumn day in 79 AD, nearby Mount Vesuvius erupted, spewing ash and pumice into the air and over the unprepared cities below. Herculaneum was hit by waves of superheated gas and magma known as pyroclastic flows. By the time it cooled, Herculaneum was completely carbonized and sealed beneath the hardened rock. Buried away, the city drifted out of memory for 1,700 years. It wasn't until 1709 that workers digging in a well in the town of Racina made a discovery that brought Herculaneum back into the pages of history. While digging, the men hit the upper structure of the city's ancient theater. A mad rush to excavate the city and claim its buried treasures followed. Then, in 1750, the greatest archaeological treasure of Herculaneum was discovered by a Swiss architect named Karl Weber. He uncovered a huge Roman house that would be called the Villa dei Papiri. The villa was at least three stories tall, and at one time would have sat right beside the Bay of Naples. It is thought to have been built by Julius Caesar's father-in-law, Lucius Calpurnius Piso, and would have contained many luxurious features, like pools, gardens, and sitting areas. Most importantly, it contained an enormous library of papyrus scrolls. Upon their discovery of the library, the excavators did not initially realize what they had uncovered. The charred scrolls were thought to be carbonized tree branches buried by the eruption. Tragically, many of the manuscripts were thrown away or burned before anyone realized the truth. But many of the manuscripts did survive. In total, about 1,800 papyrus scrolls have been excavated from the villa, making it the largest complete library from antiquity ever discovered. There are also still many manuscripts left to find, as two stories of the villa remain unexcavated. The mystery of what lost knowledge might wait inside the scrolls excites historians and scholars alike. Rediscovered works of great philosophers, playwrights, and politicians from ancient Greece and Rome would have the potential to transform how we view the classical world. However, accessing whatever secrets hide within the manuscripts has proven to come at a price, often the cost of the very scrolls themselves. Here's the problem. Like the rest of the objects buried at Herculaneum, the scrolls found inside the villa were completely carbonized by the extreme temperatures of the volcanic flows. This same process that preserved the documents for centuries left them incredibly fragile and nearly impossible to open without causing the manuscripts to crumble. To make matters worse, the scrolls are also warped and it's practically impossible to tell where one layer of papyrus ends and another begins. Many attempts have been made to open the scrolls, and most have ended in disaster. One important breakthrough came in the 19th century when a Vatican priest named Father Piaggio created a machine that peeled apart the layers of papyrus at a pace of 5 millimeters a day. It took almost four years for the first scroll to be unrolled, but over the next few generations, about 300 of the documents were unraveled using this device. The machine left many of the pieces in fragments with their text almost illegible. Efforts to read the open manuscripts stalled until another breakthrough came through in 1999, when scientists at BYU examined the fragments using infrared light. Suddenly, letters could be seen on ancient pieces of papyrus. Almost three centuries after the library had first been uncovered, scientists were able to read fragments from the text and begin to learn about what exactly had been discovered. So what exactly has been found inside the open scrolls? The majority of what has been revealed so far is a collection of works by the philosopher Philodemus. So much of the work of Philodemus has been discovered that some scholars think the collection might actually be the philosopher's personal library. This is supported by the fact that Calpurnius Piso, the villa's owner and Caesar's father-in-law, was Philodemus's patron. Though most experts do not consider Philodemus himself to be a great thinker, his connection to other important classical figures is enticing for those working on the scrolls. Philodemus studied under the school of Epicurean philosophy, which has given scholars hope that the rest of the library might contain works by Epicurus himself. If any works of Epicurus wait inside the library, this would be a monumental find for scholars as only a few letters and collections of quotes currently survive from him. Among the manuscripts that have been read, there are entertaining bits as well. There is one particular document written by a philosopher named Zeno that is titled, In Reply to Craterus's Essay Against Zeno's Essay on Geometric Proofs. This makes the scroll the oldest known response to a hostile book review. There are many other classical works that scholars hope might be contained in the remaining manuscripts. Most of the open scrolls have been written in Greek, but a villa owned by a Latin-speaking Roman like Calpurnius Piso 
is almost certain to have held an abundance of Latin texts as well. One hope is that an early copy of the Latin masterpiece, the Aeneid, might be among the collection, as Virgil and Philodemus are thought to have known each other. Other experts hope that lost works such as the poems of Sappho or writings of Mark Antony might be among the texts. Since the discovery of the library, almost half the collection has been unrolled. The downside of these efforts has been that opening the scrolls left many of the texts destroyed in the process. Because of the damage of the artifacts, all actual openings of the scrolls have stopped. If future scientists and historians are to learn about the contents of the remaining manuscripts, the information will have to be extracted with the papyri remaining closed. Despite this setback, hope for discovering the secrets of the remaining scrolls is not lost. Modern advances in technology have given scholars hope that they might soon uncover the remaining secrets of the invisible library, the key being the rise of machine learning. Here's how scientists are using the technology. First, they take the high-energy x-rays of the scroll's fragments that have already been opened. Then, artificial intelligence analyzes the image of the fragments, focusing on placement of the raised ink on the papyrus. The AI software can then develop predictions for where ink is expected to be within x-ray scans of other fragments. The hope is that this technology can eventually be utilized to analyze scans of the closed scrolls and recreate their texts. While the technology is yet to be perfected, the possibility of one day reading a recreation of a lost poem of Sappho or the philosophy of Epicurus remains in the imagination of all who work on the scrolls. They are hopeful that with continued scientific work, one day soon all the secrets of the invisible library of Herculaneum, secrets that remained hidden for 2,000 years, might be as accessible as your neighborhood library.